Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll go over my top 10 tips and tricks for using tanks in all War Thunder Ground Forces modes, especially for RB, Realistic, and even AB, Arcade. I've been playing War Thunder since 2013, and I've learned quite a few things during those many years of gameplay. That said, please like, comment, and especially subscribe for more content like this. Also, check out my other tips and tricks videos specifically for RB and AB game modes for both air and ground, as I will have them pop up on the top right of this video every few minutes. That said, let's get into it. So, for tip number one, don't just look at the maximum penetration value of a shell as the pen that you'll get for any given shell and think that that shell is the best shell for you. Now, while it's a little bit more complicated than just saying that a particular shell can go through however much armor, it is unwise to look at a shell's maximum penetration at 0 degrees and 10 meters and take that as what you'll be getting. More often than not, judge it based on the 500 to 1000 meter stats at around 30 or so degrees. Even if you are looking at an enemy dead on from the front, chances are that you'll be looking at them from at least 10 plus degrees without even knowing it, especially when considering that tank's armor slope, your height differences compared to the enemy tank, and other factors that can easily change impact angle without you even knowing. Ultimately, if you're in a King Tiger for example, which is a tall tank, and you're firing on a short tank, Tank like a T-44, you are inherently at a difference of angles right there. And that's not considering the armor slope of the T-44, the height at which the T-44 is sitting in terms of elevation, and so forth. The only time when that max pen stat might be accurate to your situation is if you're coming through a cloud of smoke and wind up point blank next to the side of a Tiger 1. Further, a good example of ideal armor pen not being indicative of the best shell for your tank is if you look at the shell types on the XM8 in the American Tank Tech. Tree. Now, while the C76A1 shell has the same top end armor pen, it clearly outperforms the M735 shell in more combat scenarios at both distance and angle. Another more accessible example of this is the IS2 with the BR471 and BR471B shells, with the B shell having both better armor pen at a distance and at various angles. It also has better ricochet stats, meaning that it will take a higher angle of impact to ricochet the shell entirely. Unless you're facing a totally unskilled player that uses, for example, the Bob Semple tank, haha, not only will your enemy try to angle their tank, but their tanks will already have angled armor. Even if it's slight, always take that into account when choosing shell type rather than just going for whatever the top armor pen shell is at 10 meters and 0 degrees, or worse yet, settling on the cheapest shell. Another thing to consider is ammo types, such as APCR versus other shell types and more. I can get into that in other videos if you'd like, just let me know in the comments below. For number two, keep checking your score, especially if you're flanking or if you're behind enemy lines, as an increasing score indicates that enemies are nearby. This is especially useful in RB, where enemies are only found if you make direct eye contact with them. There have been numerous times where I found myself at zero score, even when feeling like I get close to where enemy lines would normally be on a map. Then all of a sudden, when I'm somewhere that I thought no one else was near, my score would start rising. This is a clear indication of nearby enemies. Don't keep your your score screen open for too long though as it might end up getting you killed because it'll block your view of the enemy. This can be a very powerful technique to find enemies actively without actually seeing them first, especially if you like to flank. For tip number three, I would strongly suggest to check out War Thunder YouTube channels that host excellent gameplay, especially the War Thunder Best Replays channel, where you can watch daily gameplay from some of the game's best players uploaded to one channel in order for you to hone your skills. You will see how the best of the best play, which will give you great insight as to how to master various tanks, planes, and maps, all in full HD and high def audio. I've linked them in both the description and pinned comment below. Check them out. For tip number four, don't take a full ammo load into battle. While it may seem tempting to take a full ammo load into battle, it is not a good idea, especially on vehicles where ammo racks sit behind huge weak spots, such as on the Tiger, the Panther, and even some Sherman models. My rule of thumb is to take only about 50% ammunition at most. 
unless you have an incredibly fast firing cannon, such as with the Kachi, or if your ammo racks are very small, such as on the AML-90, as they can only carry 20 shells at most. In that case, I would carry 16 shells at a minimum. In regards to the Kachi, I once had a match where I went through over 90 shells and was ultimately limited because, even with some shells being reloaded on my captured point, I ran out of ammunition, largely because it only has around a 4 second reload and it has a somewhat inaccurate cannon and faces small enemies. Though this match may be an outlier, as I had something like 19 or 20 kills, it is still important to load a good balance of ammunition so that you have enough for most situations and aren't putting yourself in excessive danger by carrying too many shells. Additionally, it is now easier to know how many shells are either in an autoloader or are set up with fast firing due to first stage ammo storage. You can actually see this in-game on the bottom left when you look at your tank's status. On some vehicles, like the American an XM8, it would be wise to essentially carry the limit of ammunition in the first stage ammo stowage, which is 21 shells again in the case of the XM8, as it sometimes will be entirely sufficient for a battle and will ensure that you have only 100% ready to use ammunition. Number 5, this one's probably mentioned all the time and really rubs people the wrong way, but buy foliage decorations. In RB and Sim, foliage will make it much more difficult to spot your tank, especially on forest maps, though they won't work as well in city, desert, and, to a limited extent, snow maps. In addition to making it difficult to spot you, especially if you're amongst brush, it will make it more difficult to pinpoint your weak points. So put foliage in those areas if possible. Foliage works better in RB and Sim, but will still work in AB, just to a limited extent, as it should still slightly reduce detection range and will obscure some weak spots from view. Though this works better at 500 plus meters, it is still effective. These can be purchased via war bonds if you'd prefer, and the way that you can earn war bonds is by completing enough tasks during battle pass seasons. If you do not have enough war bonds in one season, don't worry, they do transfer between seasons. For number six, Turn off your tank's engine. This has multiple benefits, including reducing your thermal profile, which is extremely useful against top tier or near top tier enemies, as many of them have thermals, especially beyond 9.0 BR. Turning off your engine will also ensure that it will not make noise. This is invaluable in ambush situations, especially when hiding behind a building waiting for attack. A wise enemy will be on the lookout for engine noise, so if your engine is turned off, you can easily fool even extremely experienced players. Watch out though, if your engine is off for too long, you will lose your power turret traverse, leaving you potentially vulnerable to flanking attacks. Turning it on will give you your turret power back, but will also make you substantially more visible to enemies both through visuals and audibly. Unless your vehicle is built around speed and not much else, this tip can be of great benefit to you. Because I'm a PC player, I have my engine shut off keybound to the I button, but of course you can change it to whatever you'd like. On a side note, this can help to end engine fires in your tank if you do not have fire prevention equipment, although this is not a given every time you do it. Far from it, in fact. Number 7. Make sure to angle. Angling is when you position your vehicle in a certain way that is more likely to induce either a ricochet or a non-pen, being that it can increase your effective armor by a substantial amount. Without getting into too much detail, you basically just have to turn your tank slightly, and you can gain a quick 20% or more additional armor because now the shell would have to effectively travel more of the length of the armor rather than just the depth. I have an angling guide that goes over angling in depth if you're interested. Check it out on the top right of this video and click on the box that pops up for my angling guide. That said, certain tanks such as the T-34, T-44, and Sherman all have angled armor, called sloped armor, whereas the Tiger I and Panzer IV are infamous for their flat armor. Angling benefits all types of tanks, however, so if you already have sloped armor, be sure to slightly turn your tank away from being a direct hit from your enemy to really make your armor effective and do much the same with the Tiger or any other flat armor tank. It is easily one of the most important things that you can do in-game. Check out my angling guide video. For tip number eight, if facing an enemy that is impervious to your weapons, such as if you're fighting a mouse tank from the front when you have an SPAA, or if you're fighting a KV-1 with a low 
low pending vehicle, aim for its cannon first in order to knock out its armament so that the enemy cannot shoot back. Then go for the tracks. Typically you should be able to flank around at this point and destroy them from behind or from the side. If nothing else, it'll give you a chance to escape. In this same vein, know your enemy's weak spots and become familiar with your ammunition, as being armed with this knowledge can be the difference between victory and defeat. For example, if you fire a solid shot AP shell into the side of a Tiger 1, you might pen, but you might not destroy the tank whereas the shell with explosive filler will be far more likely to destroy the crew and detonate the Tiger's ammo racks. For tip number 9, don't bring too high of a BR tank to a match with you. Basically, if you've researched a tank and are using it in your lineup that sits around 1.0 BR or more away from your next highest BR tank in that lineup, try to exclude it from your lineup until you get other tanks of similar BR to pair with it. If you, for example, are using a 4.0 BR premium and all that you have in your lineup are 2.0 BR tanks, you will likely not be able to destroy any of your enemies. Now, if it is a low to mid BR premium tank, for example, and you're using it to grind, I get it, it happens. If all you have is this vehicle for example maybe like the b1 terror and nothing else quickly grind out the tech tree up to that br of the terror or whatever vehicle is that you're using so you can fill out your lineup with similar br vehicles just know that if you do this at the top tier it has incredibly negative effects on the outcomes of games if you buy a premium and end up dying once and leaving i'm talking to you while at warrior terms and some leopard 2 pl players at least get something else to support your top tier tank and for number 10 when you have the option of firing on the go, don't just stop and shoot, as this will cause your tank to dip down, then harshly bounce up, all before you can take a hit. Your mind will oftentimes trick you, as I know that mine does, into thinking that the upswing will even out your tank. In reality, this will make you way overshoot your target and will end up with you being dead. Instead, either wait to come to a full stop or learn to fire on the move. Firing on the move, especially when mastered, can and will account for many kills. Practice it in match and in test drive, and across different tanks and different nations, as a Panther tank is a much better suspension for firing on the move compared to, for example, the T-34, whereas M4 Shermans have limited stabilizers that work at low speeds. Try it in a ton of scenarios and keep improving. You'll never be 100% accurate, but even being 20% accurate while on the move is a huge improvement over a likely score that might be typical of around 3 to 6% accuracy when firing on the move at a decent speed. And finally, I'll give one bonus tip because my previous tip, my number 10, was a little bit similar to another tip I'd given in a previous video. So for my bonus tip, it's just simply to shoot through barriers such as fences and especially stone walls with either an HMG, LMG if possible, or main cannon if you have nothing else, if you're going through that area. Because especially if you're with a light tank, you will lose most, if not all of your momentum, which could put you at serious harm of being hit by the enemy. That all said, thank you all for watching. Please be sure to check out my other tank guides I mentioned in this video. I have more tank tips, guides for specific tanks, and just general advice for how to play the game. Also, remember to check out War Thunder Best Replays. I've made it easy to find them. Just click the link in the pinned comment and or in the description and you will be able to go straight to their page. Remember, once you get there, subscribe and you will have a ton of great content right at your doorstep. Either way, thanks again for watching everyone, and I'll see you all on the other side. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care.